Hello, and welcome to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today we're casting 20 black or green spells. Let's see how we're gonna do it. I've built a green-black ramp deck. Um, there's a lot of ways to do green-black. Rocky style, mid-range, and the explore mechanic are some of the more common ways. This is just kind of a big mana deck, but the big mana part isn't it's not overly played. It's not like we're trying to do Zukama or pull crazy stuff out of the sideboard. We just have a couple of payoffs that should hopefully be right on par with winning the game. Uh, one of them, Josu Vess, the Lich Knight. We'll see if we can kick this for a total of 10 mana and make eight 2-2 two -two Zombie Knight creatures. Uh, that's a total power of 20. <laughs> a total of 20 power when combined with Josu Vess. So... See if that can win the game. In the meantime, playing along, we have cards uh, that are just pretty fun. I love Hour of Promise. It can fetch me things like If Near Deadlands to kill creatures, Arch of Arazka to draw cards, Field of Ruin and Scavenger Grounds for some utility out of the mana base. And then we just have some good old Planeswalkers lurking around. This Never to Return can actually hang out in the three drops down here where... Thrashing Brontodon, Doomfall, Never, and this fun little ditty Ramanop Excavator can get lands back out of our graveyard, such as Field of Ruin, and maybe our Arch of Arazka can come back if it's been blown up. Uh, but yeah, it's mainly a it's mainly designed for the funds. Uh, obviously, cards like Eldest Reborn are exciting. Uh, One Liliana's Death's Majesty is cool. A Multani, a giant Multani, could be very fun, and Vraska could also do a lot of work. But I mostly want to hold off the red decks and play a Josu and maybe use some Phyrexian scripture shenanigans off a Chandler initiate to wipe the board. You know, crazy stuff like that. Maybe Karn will tick up a few times. The numbers are definitely up for debate. There's a lot of ways to build this deck and you can certainly plus minus, you know, a few less of these, a few more of that, all that you want to. There's no doubt that this deck could have more Karns, more Vraska's Contempts, that the deck could uh, play Carnage Tyrant or something else up here in the higher six drop spot. It's a very flexible archetype and it's very debatable over what's right and what's wrong. I don't have a sure answer on that right now. I do know that I want to kick a Josu Vest and I hope that we get to do that today. I also included a memorial, blah, blah, a memorial of folly in the mana base you can fetch it with Hour of Promise and possibly get a Josu Vest back out of the graveyard if you had to play it early. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And let's get into it. For those of you paying close attention, you saw the 250 card Amazonian pile with Yargle on the front. You're going to have to go over to the Twitch channel and watch the first video. Uh, from yeah, you're gonna have to watch uh, yesterday's video. Uh, that would have been June 5th's video stream if you want to know how that turned out. Probably not gonna have, be making a YouTube video on that one anytime soon, but it was certainly an eventful stream. And Amazonian uh, has a great Twitch channel, and she sponsored the deck, and it was a blast. All right, here we go. Yay, we hit the land, pretty much the perfect land that we needed right now. Our opponent's showing us red and blue. Perhaps this is Wizards, perhaps it's God Pharaoh's Gift. I think I want to hold this. If it is God Pharaoh's Gift, I want this to hit a Champion of Wits. So I'm going to send in my Branch Walker and offer a trade here. No tradesies from the opponent. Um, if it's Gift, we want to go about finding a Thrashing Brontodon. There's the champ. The champ is here, and here is a great counter to it. Moment of Craving means that if the opponent does use the ability, they have to discard two cards and they do not draw any. That is because it says equal to its power, and its power at the time of its death, negative or, or zero. Zero is the answer we're looking for there. So. Uh, we can slam a Karn and try to get more lands. We could slam a Josu for no value, but that's not what I'm here to do. I really want to make sure I hit my 5-drop. We also have Doomfall here. It could go after, say, the combo pieces. So we have a pretty pivotal turn, and I think what I want to do is get Karn down. 
If my opponent sees a Karn and then plays like a gate and not another creature, that means I get more activations out of Karn. If my opponent plays another creature after I play Karn, I get at least two activations from Karn. I likely get the lands I need, and I get more time to Doom Fall away uh, the gate to the afterlife type shenanigans. So that's the plan. Uh, let's send in the branchy. Plus the robot. And our opponent gets their the choice of land here. Probably does not want me to have a scavenger grounds. So that is a really good card to hit next turn if Karn lives. As taking out the opponent's graveyard can truly ruin them. <clears throat> and now combat celebrant. Definitely looks like a God Pharaoh's gift deck. So what's the play? Um, taking Karn down and getting back a scavenger ground seems very good. We could at the same time play an Eldest Reborn. Our opponent has to sacrifice something. The next turn they'd have to discard. The turn after that we could get something out of the graveyard. The other option is to play Hour of Promise. That would make two zombies. Karn would be at risk. He would go down to three. Warkite Marauder could take him to two. A Fanatical Firebrand could kill him. But is that really the important part here? I don't think so. I think that getting the mana going is the most important part. So we'll put Karn a little bit at risk. Get our scavenger grounds and make some Hour of Promise zombies. And the lands we want to get are definitely deserts or else we don't make the zombies. So the question is, hash up Oasis if near Deadlands. I guess if we get both, we have options. There's no reason to just get one or the other. <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. My vocals. And we could keep up the pressure. I think that's pretty prudent. If our opponent somehow killed these, that would be annoying. But I don't... I don't believe them. I don't believe they can find a way. These can exert the Celebrant and then get double attacks out of the Warkite Marauder. But let's go ahead and take this out while we can. And now Karn does die to the Warkite Marauder. But like I said, I don't think the game is necessarily about ticking Karn up a bunch. I think we're doing exactly what we need to be doing. Besides, we can get Karn back with the Eldest Reborn if uh, that's the opportunity that presents. Siege Gang Commander. That is a card. And that is a moment of craving, right? On time. I'm starting to think it might be time to Doomfall my opponent's hand. They could have more cards like Siege Gang in there. So we're going to do that first. Ah, the gift and the gate. And they have five mana now. This could be enough to play the God Pharaoh's gift next turn. So I think I have to straight up take the gift or else they might straight cast it. We'll play this tapped, continue our march towards the top of the mana. And we'll take out the Siege Gang Commander on our turn. And now we'll... Let's see, we've got our opponent at 14. We could just keep attacking. What does that do? I guess not enough. Not that much. We'll say go. Here's the gate. I don't think they can get there this turn. Let's see, if they sacrifice this, they get one loot, and that can get them to five. So they'd have to hit another Prospector off the top. No, they're discarding whatever they draw anyway. So they're not going to get there on gate this turn. So next turn, the sa Scavenger Grounds will get cooking. Opponent's going to target over here. I will just block a token here. The Warkite Marauder is starting to be a bit of a pest. We definitely want to Scavenger Grounds the opponent's graveyard. And they're empty-handed, so right now killing the Warkite Marauder seems fine, but I'd have to sacrifice a land to do it. I think what I'll do is play Eldest Reborn and then pitch the graveyards. 
So our opponent will might sacrifice, like, say, this prospector or something to get a gate loot. But we'll see. Maybe they'll sacrifice a token. Seeing the scavenger grounds activation coming. Ah, they do sacrifice a marauder. I'm actually very lucky about that. Okay, a vizier. Unfortunately for them, now we're going to pitch the desert and nuke the graveyard. And I'll put gate a ways off of activating. Now, unfortunately, that does mean Eldest Reborn doesn't get something back unless we get something from here into the graveyard. Oh, there we go. We can get a serpent now because our opponent drew that. However, exiling all this stuff, Celebrant, Siege Gang, Vizier, Champion, when they have this much mana, seems a very good call to me. Now we make our opponent discard this card. They're going to cast Fiery Cannonade. Um, that would kill their own creatures, and I think they just realized it. <laughs> and game one is down. Uh... <laughs> So we saw the power of our promise fetching. Well, actually, it didn't fetch the scavenger grounds. It could have, but Karn found the scavenger grounds. But we see the awesomeness of the one of scavenger grounds, drawing it for the matchup. And let's play the tap land. We could really use a second green for this hand. We'll see. Oh, well, that sort of provides it. Yeah, I think we'll just get the mana accelerant out instead of the branch walker. Since our opponent isn't on pace for a Chain Whirler here, I'm not worried about when the initialer might get blown up. Okay. Desert City, that's for sure. Thinking it probably best to get into my opponent's hand here and see what they've got cooking, as I don't really know what they're up to. Get that sweet information from Doomfall. The opponent may have a seal away for the initiate. That may mean that tapping it that quickly was a mistake. Although it's not crucial to our game plan right now. I see. So some kind of a green-white mid-rangey thing. We got Settle, we got Cast Out. Those are annoying cards. But right now we don't have an answer in our hand for the Voice of Plenty. So I will just knock that out. Our opponent's unknown card doesn't change any plans here. Uh, I'll play the Evolving Wilds, but before... No, we definitely want to play the Branch Walker after we play the Wilds, because if we put something we want on top, we don't want to have to shuffle it away. The Wilds is good, because now Excavator can get it back next turn for a little bit of value. And if the Excavator isn't dealt with, even though our, we know our opponent has a cast out, but if the Excavator is not dealt with... We'll have uh, the ability to just keep looping out dead lands and using deserts. The Eldest Reborn. Uh, that seems pretty solid. It can deal with whatever Lyra or whatever creature our opponent finds next. Our opponent has a cast out, which is annoying, but if we force them to cast out the Eldest Reborn after we get value, like sacrifice a creature, we have to be happy about that. So now the opponent has a tough choice of whether or not to play something like a big angel into the Eldest Reborn. We also have like the Deadlands loop with Excavator. If they play something small that they'd want to sacrifice, we can just kill it with the Deadlands. But let's lead with uh, attacking with the Branch Walker. If our opponent wants to settle it, that is totally fine with me. Or if they want to use Cast Out. Doesn't look like they're interested. I'm not surprised. Let's put out the Excavator and get back the Evolving Wilds. And what do we get now? A Swamp? I guess we have a lot of black sources. And we'll see if the opponent uses their Cast Out or if they let the Excavator hang around and get us more lands. It's... 
If they use the cast out though, what do they do about the Eldest Reborn? Just not play creatures for a very long time? I don't think that's a winning recipe for them. So we've already got them in a tough spot. Okay, they just straight play Lyra, knowing all about the Eldest Reborn. Let's get back the Evolving Wilds, use it. Oh, the value, the sweet, sweet value. Let's drop the Eldest Reborn. Opponent might, uh, no, they don't have another Lyra. I thought they had another unknown in their hand, but apparently not. Bring it while our opponent's tapped out of Settle Mana. And now they're definitely incentivized to cast this out before it gets a Lyra out of the graveyard. Or they could cast out the Lyra. If they do that, maybe they have a way to eliminate their own cast out and get their Lyra back. I don't know what that looks like. Thrashing Bronto, perhaps? Well, they found a Llanowar Elf. And they say go. So discard a card. We still have an Evolving Wilds in the Graveyard, but we could use the, the Deadlands on the Llanowar Elf. That's sweet value. I don't see why not. I will sacrifice this Desert. Let's see if they want to cast out the Excavator. Probably not since the Eldest Reborn is going to go off. And we'll get back the Deadlands. More value. We'll just send you in. We don't want to send our Excavator in to settle the wreckage. How much damage is our opponent willing to take from this Branch Walker? It's done a lot of damage so far. Almost all the damage in the game. Except for one hit from Excavator. And the cast out's coming down at long last. What will it target? It will target the Eldest Reborn. Okay. Knight of Grace off the top is immune to our removal, but not to the Deadlands. So we'll run it back. Deadlands, although having black activation, is colorless, so it can totally kill a Knight of Grace that has Hexproof from black. Branchy will keep wearing you down. And you see we've got... I, this is a good game. We got to show off the Ramanop Excavator lock with the uh, If Near Deadlands. It's very fun. Maybe it's not a lock, but it definitely makes small creatures from the opponent much less effective. Our opponent finds a branch walker. Just more fodder, I tell you. History of Benalia on top. Just more fodder. Ooh, scriptures. That's a very fun card. So if our opponent plays the history, he's going to lose two creatures. So this kind of puts his history off, but then we kind of put pressure on him with the excavator, but he just chump blocks this turn. So that's not very great. Why not? Just keep it, keep it rocking. We're almost into a range where we can hash up Oasis and get him. We're just about there. I think I'll go ahead and use the Craving Moment here so I can take a turn off from using the Deadlands. There's a green mana. Set up more green mana on the battlefield. 
Because there may be a good moment for like using the Oasis multiple times. And we'll say go. And the Jade Light Ranger has been found. Carnage Tyrant hanging out at the top of the deck. Unfortunately, Carnage Tyrant will not live to see the sun. Or will not get a chance to see the sun, I suppose. That's the right way to say it. All right, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Green, green, green. Just make sure you tap that stuff right. I've made some mistakes in my time. All attack. Ah, yes. We took the green white deck to value town. Ramanop Valley Town. So it's a it's a story of the one ofs. People often say, "What value do you get from having a one of in your deck?" And uh, we saw the Scavenger Grounds dominating in against Godfrey's Gift. There you saw the Excavator dominating against the Green White deck. You get you get your value. Um, okay, this is a difficult hand because we don't actually have much going early at all, and then we have this kind of glut at five. This is kind of risky. I'm going to try it, but this is not a great hand. I'm kind of counting on drawing some, the twos and threes, of which I have a good amount of in the deck, but not yet. Double Arch of Arazka is not great either, of course. It will probably hurt us in some way on mana requirements. Um... I guess I can just get this down. It's not doing anything right now. But it's kind of a free resolution here. Our opponent's showing that they probably have a fungal infection with this hesitation. That or a scarab feast. Okay. Search for his Kanta is going to mean that uh, Karn gets to resolve. And... The Ramanop Excavator gets to attack. Scavenger Grounds can be very helpful against Search for his Kanta, keeping it from flipping. And let's see what Karn can find us, if it can dig us out of this awkward draw with a lot of colorless land. Memorial to follow you and the Ramanop Excavator is a slow but fun value train as well. Search keeps the card on top. Let's see. Oh, hit and land drops. Opportunity here to use Field of Ruin if they so wanted, but it doesn't do any good with, with the Excavator on the board. They're going to have to kill the Excavator before that matters. Which, on that note, it might be wise to take Karn down and get this Memorial to Folly, as it can keep the Excavator coming back, unless it gets Frasca's Contempt. Um, so do I attack is the question. Our opponent could have an awkward combination of things. I do think they have a Fungal Infection if they also have a Moment of Craving, but that can happen whether we attack or not. So let's see what they do. Okay. Just the fungal infection right now, it looks like. Okay, so let's see. We have a land. We can go for Hour of Promise, which is awesome. Eldest Reborn doesn't do enough yet, I don't think. Definitely worth saving for a Scare of God next turn. We could go with one of these smaller creatures. I don't know if that's really doing it. But I really don't want this Hour of Promise to run right into a counter spell, which seems pretty likely. I guess I should try anyway, though, because if it does resolve, that's a really big game. I 
And it does. Um, we have two deserts, so I only need one desert for zombies. I may as well get that green desert. And then what do I need? Uh, another black source would be very nice. So just some mana that makes black. Actually, let's get Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin or Evolving Wilds, but either Field of Ruin's probably even better for producing mana and working with the Excavator if it lives. And then let's go get the Memorial to Folly. No. Yes. No. Yes. Ah, so good with the Excavator. I think I'll take it. It can't hurt to have more land drops. Not really. End step. Again, using the Field of Ruin doesn't matter as long as Excavator lives. How about Avraska's Contempt? It would be kind of weird to do it on end step when you could have done it earlier. I guess keeping options open for some kind of counter, but they clearly didn't have one because Hour of Promise is definitely a counter-worthy spell. And opponent does go straight to their upkeep. They keep their card on top. They've done that twice. It should imply that they have good cards, but so far they haven't interacted with us much at all. A Golden Demise takes out the zombies and a Fungal Infection can finish the Excavator. So I suppose that's better than nothing. Um, let's plus a Karn here. So, so that guy's so intense. All right, how to play. I feel like another hour of promise is a great call. Just a great call. And tapping for it, it's all good. All right, so now we've got some of these deserts already. I think I just want to fix my mana a bit. Uh, my life total isn't likely to matter too much. So I'll grab a second Deadlands just because. More deserts to sacrifice. We'll play the Memorial to Folly. And we'll play the Channeler Initiate and go for big mana. I will put the counters over here. Now that my opponent's played the Fungal Infection, I'm less afraid. But we'll see if they have another. Nezahal goes to the bin. First card that's been binned over here. A Duress will likely get Death's Majesty. Our opponent now counting our, our lands for Josu Vess. Yeah, that's a lot. And we've got the Memorial to Folly. So now they're going to exile Josu Vess. But we can use Memorial to Folly uh, to get back the Ramanop Excavator to get back the Memorial to Folly. So, hmm, let's plus the Karn, see where this goes. Indeed. All right, sacrifice you. Submit. We'll play the Excavator. Have to pay one life to do it. Get back Memorial to Folly. Add green. We could use the Field of Ruin here, but I don't think it's necessary. We can do it next turn if we really want to. And we don't want to fill his graveyard up and flip it faster, even though we can also take out his Search for his Kanta. Giving him a turn with it just isn't necessary. That can go to the graveyard. It's probably not useful here. And now our zombies can get busy. Syncopate hitting the bin. Yeah, you're probably not going to outmana us in this game, so that's a good call. Maybe now Scare of God comes down, but our opponent knows about Eldest Reborn. Um, there is the 1-1, one, one, though. But we have the Deadlands. Hmm, getting back Nezahal. Spunky. Nezahal the zombie. Um... So he only has three cards left. We have a Vraska's Contempt in our graveyard.
Let's see, five mana and five mana for Eldest Reborn and for If Near Deadlands to take out the one one. Our opponent has to discard three cards and they would still lose their Liliana. So I like this a lot. Um, let's make sure we tap carefully. with that replay this from the graveyard all this reborn now opponent will likely discard three cards to exile the Nezahal but then they lose their Liliana and we get an attack or they could let their Nezahal die. And then they lose their Liliana. It's it's a terrible choice. Okay. Um, Karn then, let's plus Karn, see what happens. We've already played our land for the turn. <laughs> and I doubt we get a Vraska here. And we could attack in with everybody and threaten lethal next turn. I suppose that's good against the Nezahal. We give up the Excavator, but we still have Memorial to Folly. So we can always run that back later. And if Nezahal wants to attack, say, the Karn, it's still going to survive the hit. And the opponent still has to clean up this board. All right, down to five. It's kind to flip. But if they use it, they're very low on mana. And they need to do something dramatic. Make them discard. All right, Champ of Wits. Let's see if we can resolve a Doomfall. If they want to discard to save this or play a counter spell to save it, that's more of their mana down the tubes. And they're still dead on board as it is. Okay. So I think we'll get the Vraska's Contempt. See what they want to do now. Just saving it won't save them either. They need to be able to play a removal spell and have their Nezahal. That is totally fine. And that is the game. Hopefully we got the quest fulfilled after that. Let's find out. Yes, quest is fulfilled. Quest is fulfilled. So, uh, again, um, tomorrow is going to be the Kaladesh patch release. That's very, very exciting. And there uh, will probably be some arena downtime, so don't expect a video tomorrow. But starting Friday, we'll have Kaladesh cards, and we'll put this 50,000 gold to work, crack some packs of the new set. If you want to check out that, uh, I'll be on Twitch probably tomorrow afternoon, shortly after the patch goes live. So... Thank you very much for coming out to this video t and uh, watching it. And I'm CGB, but for right now, and until probably Friday or later, I am out of here. See you all in Kaladesh.